So back in 2022, when Leica announced this camera, I was one of those people who went online, public forums, Discord, what have you, and dissed the camera. I didn't understand it. I said that it's pointless, it's overpriced. Why would anyone buy the camera? The camera I'm talking about is the Leica M11 monochrome. So who in your right mind will spend $9,000 on a camera that doesn't see color? Yeah, it's just, it, I just don't understand spending that amount of money, $9,000 buying a camera without a lens and limiting yourself to um, monochrome photographs. Why not just remove the saturation from a photograph that is taken in color? Fast forward a few years later, I found myself shooting the Leica M11. And then I was presented with an opportunity to get my hands on the Leica M11 monochrome. I decided, yeah, why not? And then I made the video on the Leica Q2M. I loved it. So I thought, hmm, what can the M11M do? So I got one. So as the name implies, the Leica M11M is a 60 megapixel camera that takes photographs with no color on it. The design language on the camera is all black. Everything is basically blacked out apart from the numbers and some gray letters on it. And yeah. Here's the thing though, it doesn't even have the um, red logo, it's replaced by a screw much like the M11P. Now the difference between this and the Leica M11 apart from a sensor which cannot take colored photographs is that this thing has the larger internal memory. Something that I wish every single camera manufacturer actually includes in their newer cameras. It's not that expensive, it's not more difficult. I would argue that having internal memory is a lot more useful than having two SD cards or two CF Express cards. So why a monochrome camera? I mentioned that every single sensor starts out as monochrome from the factory until the camera manufacturers, in order to make it take color photographs, is they would put a Bayer color array on the sensor itself or an x -trans, what have you. So that sensor, it's essentially a red, green, and blue sensor. And that thing takes a lot of light and clarity away from the sensor. Essentially, this is what the sensor can do at its best. We're going to jump straight into image quality. So I went out on another market shoot and here's what happened. So yeah, those are the photographs I got. What do I think of the camera? Well, I made some mistakes when I went out shooting with it. I didn't underexpose enough. So when you're shooting colored photographs, there are multiple channels that you can recover the highlights from. On this camera, you need to severely underexpose it. You don't need to be afraid of clipping the shadows because there is so much shadow detail being retained on this camera. It's really incredible. This is a severely underexposed photograph. And this is the same photograph as the shadows recovered. Right, as you can see, so much shadow detail. Right, build quality on this camera. The thing that I don't like about this camera is that it is made out of aluminium compared to the silver M11 that I have. Right, a lot of people will argue with me that they like a lighter camera. I don't think it's about the weight, it's about how the weight is distributed on the camera itself. So 
This is fine with the light lens lab 35 millimeter eight element because it's not front heavy. It makes the center of gravity or the weight distribution somewhere in the center of camera. But then as soon as you mount a heavier lens, it becomes really front heavy. Let me show you. This is the light lens lab 15 millimeter F12. Right, as you can see, it droops forward. The problem is the weight is distributed to the front, which makes it front heavy. There is a bit of torque on your wrist to keep the camera level. That is where the fatigue comes in. So yeah, if you're putting it on the M11, it still also droops forward, but then the center of gravity is actually distributed a bit more behind the lens, which makes it feel lighter. Another thing about the 60 megapixel sensor is that it needs a modern lens to properly resolve it. I wish that I brought the 50 millimeter zoom lens instead of the 35 millimeter f2.8 element from Light Lens Lab. My experience is shooting on the M11M is that you cannot underestimate how much you need to underexpose it. So let me take you through my settings that I got from Matt Day's video, link down below. So I use highlight weighted metering, which basically protects the highlights. And in addition to that, I use minus two EV. Yeah, it sounds very, very underexposed, but then there is so much shadow detail there. So yeah, it doesn't matter because you have no hope of ever recovering any highlights from this camera. In terms of auto ISO, I would not go beyond 40,000. This thing is capable of going up to 200,000. Wouldn't go over 40,000 because your images will have too much grain on it, although still usable. So who is the M11 monochrome for? It's for the people who like black and white photography and nothing else. It's for the purists, it's for the people who demand the absolute best quality black and white photographs out of their digital cameras. Me, personally, I wouldn't choose that as my one and only camera. I'm predominantly a color photograph shooter. I shoot 80% of my work in color. It's a novelty item for me. It might not be for a lot of people, but then, yeah, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's an incredible camera. My personal favorite like uh, monochrome camera is the Q2M. I prefer that over the M11M because I'm just a casual black and white shooter. Yeah, you can argue that I already have Leica lenses, but to be honest, black and white, I'm not that into it. So yeah, I would choose the M11 personally. Right, that has been my thoughts about the M11 monochrome. By the way, Ronin supply straps are available. Link down below, that's the best way you can support this channel. We'll be releasing some film look presets eventually. I'll get them done soon-ish, no promises. I'll try. Yeah, see you in the next one.